Hello friends, and welcome back to another video. Today we will be talking about My Immortal. I'm assuming if you clicked on this video, you already are familiar with My Immortal, but in case you need a refresher, My Immortal is a Harry Potter fanfiction posted to fanfiction.net between 2006 and 2007. It has been infamous across the internet ever since. It has been called the worst fanfiction ever written. It has been called the best fanfiction ever written. Bold claims, I know, but, but I assure you it is a striking masterpiece. I plan to read all nearly 23,000 words of it for my 1 million subscriber special. I'm going to read it all out loud for you in a probably the longest video I've ever made. So make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see that in the future. My Immortal follows 17-year-old Ebony Darkness Dementia Ravenway, a goth vampire girl and also Hogwarts student. Ebony is what we would call a self-insert or a Mary Sue character. It was a very established fanfiction trope already by that point where the author writes themselves or more often an unrealistically perfect and cool version of themselves into a story. The author of My Immortal was a teenager named Tara. Her author's notes throughout the story reveal a little bit about her and her editor slash collaborator Raven. They're very into the style and culture and music of like 2000s emo. Tara usually describes herself and Ebony as goth or gothic and many aspects of her style are. However, her music taste is just like the epitome of mid-2000s emo. Every chapter is full of references to My Chemical Romance and Evanescence and Good Charlotte. The characters are always shopping at Hot Topic and wearing band merch and going to shows. One of the things about My Immortal that really sticks with people is the way that she describes outfits in such great detail for such an unnecessarily long amount of time. I have a whole video recreating some of those outfits because Wow, we, we have such amazing detailed descriptions of them that it is possible to do that. Ebony's fashion sense is, it's too galaxy brain for society. For Shoppers Drug Mart, perhaps even for me, I have now lived in her skin and even I don't claim to fully understand this. However, one thing I do know is that Ebony thinks she is the hottest shit in the entire world and it was impossible not to channel a little bit of that while I was out because Jesus fuck, I had 666 on my ass, what else was I supposed to do? At this point in my summary of what My Immortal is, I, d I don't blame you if you've already forgotten that this is supposed to be a Harry Potter fan fiction because to be honest, I think that Tara forgets sometimes as well. She's not a very big fan of Harry Potter. She doesn't really have any regard for the Harry Potter canon. She admits to never having read the book, so only seen the movies, of which there were only four at the time that she wrote My Immortal. The story features a cast of just wildly out of character and gothified Harry Potter characters. She renames half of them. She has no attachment to them whatsoever. There's honestly not really a reason for this to be set in the Harry Potter universe at all. So the fact that it is, is just... One of the things that makes it so, Harry is now a vampire named Vampire, Hermione's name is Bloody Mary, Ron is Diablo, I believe. Draco, however, is deemed already sufficiently goth. You know, add some eyeliner and an MCR shirt and we're good. He's the main love interest slash boyfriend of Ebony throughout the story. Although there is briefly a love triangle with uh, Vampire Harry, more so, Draco and Vampire Harry also have a thing on the side of Draco's thing with Ebony, and I think Vampire is also in love with Ebony, but Ebony is not in love with Vampire. But before we go any deeper down this My Immortal rabbit hole, I do have to tell you a little bit about this video's sponsor, Athletic Greens. Athletic Greens has designed the AG1 nutritional drink to deliver comprehensive daily nutrients and support long-term gut health. Gut health, of course, supports your everything. AG1 combines nine health products all in one simple scoop. It's got your vitamins, your minerals, your dairy-free probiotics and prebiotics, plant extracts and antioxidants, a superfood complex, enzymes, and a mushroom complex to help support digestion. I don't even want to Think about how many supplements I would have to take to cover all of those bases. Athletic Greens recommends drinking one scoop of AG1 once a day, every day, in 10 ounces of cold water. It's really that simple. I have been drinking mine for almost two months now. So has my girlfriend, actually. We've both really gotten into it as like a morning routine. To me, it tastes green. The main flavor to me is like spinach, like a smoothie with spinach in it. And then there's also a hint of like sweetness and vanilla to it. Personally, I think it tastes good. I look forward to drinking it. They also sent me their vitamin D3 and K2. I actually will usually just put a few drops of this in my AG1 drink. Some travel packs. These are super convenient. My girlfriend is actually traveling right now and took a bunch of these with her. At first, I kind of assumed that, that something called athletic greens might not be for someone like me with spaghetti noodles for arms. But shockingly, uh, goth nerds need to get sufficient nutrients as well. I mean, we never go out in the sun, so... So go check it out. You can click my link in the description below to get a year's supply of vitamin D3 and K2, as well as five travel packs for free with your first purchase. And now, back to your regularly scheduled content. So one fateful day, February 16th, 2006, a fanfiction is uploaded to fanfiction.net. I think we're all familiar with the iconic opening lines. Chapter 1. 
Helena. 15-year-old Eternity Dementia Johnson warily took a seat on the Hogwarts Express. As she did so, she heard many giggles in the air. Ugh, stupid preps. Eternity had hoped she wouldn't see any when she came to Hogwarts. They had made her life in Los Angeles High School miserable. Now she was supposed to put up with them here, she sighed sadly. In her misery, she, her iPod, out of her Emily the Strange bag, and blared some My Chemical Romance. Authors note, don't they rock? Oh great, now even more preps were giving her dirty looks. Eternity tried her best to ignore them. T wasn't because Eternity was dirty or deformed or anything. Maybe it was something to do with her black leather corset, or her ripped black miniskirt, or her black combat boots, or the metal music she was listening to. Eternity hated how people judged her like that just because she was goth. She was beautiful, with long raven black hair with red streaks, deathly pale ivory skin, and piercing blue eyes that would make any goth man's heart beat like a subway train. She was skinny, but had curves in all the right places, but her eyes still bore the sadness and the scars of her tragic past. What in Satan's name is this? This reads like an alternate universe fever dream of My Immortal. This reads like somebody read the first chapter of My Immortal and then tried to regurgitate it from memory. What have I just read to you? Well. This is the opening of a fanfiction called I'm Not Okay, which is the title of a My Chemical Romance song, just as the title of My Immortal is, is from an Evanescence song. It was written by Bloody Tears 666, aka Raven. That is right, My Immortal's editor wrote arguably the original My Immortal. At the time, her fanfiction.net profile read like this. Hi, I'm Raven. That's not my real name, but my real name, Jenny, is crappy, so don't call me that. I am 14 years old. I am a WS, which means wrist slitter. In fact, a close friend of mine recently committed suicide by doing that, but I don't want to talk about it. My favorite movies are The Grudge, Underworld, Shark Attack 2, The Ring, Corpse Bride, and The Nightmare Before Christmas. There's more, mostly horror and stuff, even though they don't scare me, but I don't feel like listen it. I hate comedies. The world is so shitty. Why pretend it's not? My favorite bands are My Chemical Romance, Evanescence, Simple Plan, Slipknot, Marilyn Manson, and Korn. I hate pop music, preps, and generally life. I write stories about depression and stuff mostly. By the way, check out my friend XXX, Bloody Wrists, 666, XXX is fanfic too. It fucking rocks. Bloody Wrists is of course Tara. Her fanfiction is My Immortal, which appeared less than one month after I'm Not Okay on March 3rd, 2006. This is the opening of My Immortal. Chapter 1. Author's note. Special fangs. Get it, because I'm gothic to my girlfriend. Ew, not in that way. Raven, bloody tier 666, for helping me with the story and spelling. You rock. Justin, you're the love of my depressing life. You rock too. MCR rocks. Hi, my name is Ebony Darkness Dementia Ravenway, and I have long black hair, that's how I got my name, with purple streaks and red tips that reaches my mid-back and icy blue eyes like limpid tears. And a lot of people tell me I look like Amy Lee. Author's note, if you don't know who she is, get the hell out of here. I'm not related to Gerard Way, but I wish I was because he's a major fucking hottie. I'm a vampire, but my teeth are straight and white. I have pale white skin. I'm also a witch, and I go to a magic school called Hogwarts in England, where I'm in the seventh year. I'm 17. I'm goth, in case you couldn't tell, and I wear mostly black. I love Hot Topic and I buy all my clothes from there. For example, today I was wearing a black corset with matching lace around it, and a black leather miniskirt, pink fishnets, and black combat boots. I was wearing black lipstick, white foundation, black eyeliner, and red eyeshadow. I was walking outside Hogwarts. It was snowing and raining, so there was no sun, which I was very happy about. A lot of preps stared at me. I put up my middle finger at them. Oh thank god, all is, all is right in the world again. She's She hasn't changed. These two fan fictions are obviously extremely similar though. Both are named after songs from emo bands. Both have vampires in the Harry Potter universe for some reason. Ebony and Eternity are both described as looking like Amy Lee, the lead singer of Evanescence. There's constant emo cultural references. Both protagonists have a romance with Draco Malfoy. There are lines that are nearly identical. The whole, uh, a bunch of preps stared at me. I stuck my middle finger up at them. That is a line that is almost word for word in both. Both have lines where they describe eyes as being blue like tears. Both Ebony and Eternity eat Count Chocula cereal, although Ebony, of course, eats it with blood instead of milk, and Eternity has it with a glass of red wine on the side, even though it's breakfast and she's 15. And it really seems like for these two friends, Raven and Tara, sharing ideas this way was not a source of competition, but rather of fun. They give each other shoutouts all the time. There's characters in their stories that are inserts of each other. So the character Willow in My Immortal is an insert of Raven, and the character Elvira in I'm Not Okay is an insert of Tara. Tara. Oh, hello, stinky boy. Understanding the predecessor Raven's I'm Not Okay, I think, is key to understanding 
why my immortal is the way it is. I'm not okay is very short and does not take too long to summarize. So here we go. The story begins with Eternity getting on the Hogwarts Express. She has a tragic backstory where her pureblood wizard parents killed themselves and then she was adopted by shitty abusive parents who wouldn't let her go to Hogwarts. Not so different from Harry Potter himself, I guess. After all these years, she has finally run away to go to Hogwarts. She is horribly affronted by someone daring to try sit next to her on the train until she realizes He's really hot. It's Draco Malfoy described as having long dyed black hair. The spelling and grammar are just leagues better than My Immortal. Maybe I'm just used to reading My Immortal, but Raven can string a story together passably. I'm not like struggling to understand what's going on here. They arrive at Hogwarts and Eternity thinks the Hogwarts castle is very beautiful. It says it looks like the Dracula castle. Some preps are like, ew, what? No, it's creepy. Raven provides links to a lot of the music videos that she references. so. That's helpful, thank you. Although I, I have a past of my own and I'm I'm very familiar with the with the Lincoln Park and Evanescence music videos that she's links, but we don't need to talk about that. And, and I didn't need to click those links. Eternity gets sorted into Slytherin with Draco and his gang of cool goth friends, which includes a girl named Elvira, who is Raven's insert of Terra, and a kid named Darren, who is a half vampire. What I've noticed about I'm not okay is that there is this genuine sense of care and even wonder for the Harry Potter universe. The, the trip to Hogwarts on the Hogwarts Express, the sorting, the classes, the magic, uh, the things about Harry Potter that people find so comforting and nostalgic are are very present in I'm Not Okay. Like like the, for the formula of it, the formula of Harry Potter is there's very much attention paid to it. Raven is conscious of the fact that Eternity is, is entering Hogwarts with no knowledge of magic at the age of 15, so she has her have to start in first year, despite the fact that she's much older. Uh, but don't worry, she's such a prodigy that she immediately gets moved up to fifth year, so it's fine. I get the impression that Raven is a real Harry Potter fan. Uh, I think the only reason that my immortal is set in the Harry Potter universe is because I'm not okay is, because Raven and Tara are just committed to sharing a brain for whatever reason. At one point in an author's note, Raven also addresses a bunch of hater preps, reminding her that uh, Harry Potter canonically takes place in the 90s, whereas her version has iPods and 2000s music, and she basically just says, fuck you, this is my version. Raven mostly creates a bunch of original characters in Slytherin to be Eternity's group of friends. The only character that she bothers to kind of like gothify and rename is Pansy Parkinson for some reason. Her name is C now. <laughs> Eternity and her group of friends hate all of the the main cast of Harry Potter. Uh, they're, they're unchanged. They're a bunch of preps. We don't like them. Unlike in My Immortal, of course, where Ebony doesn't really that probably doesn't really even know who Pansy Parkinson is. So it's the main cast of Harry Potter. It's the most recognizable characters that get made over into wild goth versions of themselves. The Slytherin common room password in I'm Not Okay is Bloody Kisses. There is a character she meets who is described as looking identical to Gerard Way, except he's just a random teenager named Satan. Eternity and her friends talk about all of their favorite bands. I will say Raven's music taste does skew a lot more goth than Tara's. They talk about horror books, they give each other makeovers, they slit their wrists together when they get depressed. The way that Raven and Tara treat self-harm is like baffling, like almost like it's fun and like depression is fun and it's all for some kind of goth clout. It reads very much like kids who are young and repeating things without really understanding the implications or consequences. I know I tend to skim over or reflect their weirdly light tone about it, but it is very much not a light topic. It's not something I really delve deeply to in this video, but I just want to make that clear. Eternity is is genuinely overjoyed to have, have this amazing group of friends who shares all of her interests, and it seems that she has a, a budding relationship with Draco as well. It reads very sincere. I if, I if I came across this in the wild, I would not assume that this was a troll. I would not be skeptical of it the way that many, many people are of my immortal. Anyway, that's that's as far as the story gets before Raven stops writing it. There was also another story after I'm Not Okay, which was on Raven's account and in Raven's much more coherent writing style, but was apparently co-authored by she and Tara. It was called Ghost of You, which is again, the title of a My Chemical Romance song. It follows a gothified Hermione who has given herself long Raven hair and green eyes using magic. She discovered that her parents were actually evil or something and killed them. Also, she's renamed herself Maya. She wore a black leather bustier, a blue plaid mini trimmed with black lace, ripped black fishnets, and black lace-up platform boots. On her face was lots and lots of black eyeliner, blood red lipstick, and matching eyeshadow. Her skin was pale white from the lack of sunlight, and she was slender, but with curves in all the right places. I, that is an exact line. <laughs> 
out of I'm not okay, she took out her iPod and put on an Evanescence song at full volume. Some preps stared at her. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh my, like, God, what are you listening to? Gasped Luna, who was sitting on another seat with a bunch of giggly blonde preps wearing a pink mini, a slutty halter top, and Gucci shoes. She looked exactly like Hilary Duff. Some preps next to her giggled. Maya stuck up her white-skinned middle finger at them. Ghost of You is not really important to like the development of My Chemical Romance or anything. I just wanted you to know that they did this a third time. Oh my god, these girls have a brand and they are good at it. Back to My Immortal and I'm not okay. A few months into these fanfictions running parallel to each other, Raven and Tara have a bit of a fight. I'm not okay, chapter five. In the shadows. Author's note. Tara is the biggest fucking bitch ever. And by the way, I'm a bigger MCR fan and Gerard is mine forever. So fuck you. And I'm not giving you your sweater back. Eternity was so happy. She went to class with the other fifth years. C, Draco, Shadow, Darren, and Satan. That fucking, not gonna say that word, Alvira, whose real name was Lindsay, like that fucking ho Lindsay Lohan, had gone all the way to the back to first year. And they put her in Gryffindor where all the not gonna say that word preps were because she couldn't even write properly and she had to get all her friends to do it for for her. <gasps> Raven! <laughs> That's scathing! It's not entirely clear what this fight was about. A sweater? Raven borrowed a sweater and didn't give it back? Anyway, uh, chapter five of I'm Not Okay, uh, this chapter that I just read the beginning of is, it's honestly not much longer than that. It's very, very short and it ends with, author's note, the end. I'm not joking. This is it. Raven was fed up. She was done. She was, she was not gonna write it anymore. By this point, My Immortal had already sped way ahead to chapter 16. Tara's author's note also addresses the fight, but doesn't really add any more useful information. My Immortal chapter 16, author's note. Raven, you suck, you fucking bick. Give me back my fudge sweater. You're supposed to writ this? Raven, what the fuck, you bitch? You're supposed to do this. By the way, fangs to Brittany5655 for teaching me Japanese. In this chapter, Willow, Tara's insert of Raven, also falls victim to misfortunes. Bloody Mary was standing there. Girl, she said happily, she specs Japanese, so do I. That means how do you do in Japanese. By the way, Willow, that fucking poser, got expelled. She failed all her classes and she skipped math. Author's note, Raven, you fucking suck, fuck you. <laughs> it serves that fucking bitch right, I laughed angrily. Anyway, we were felon depressed. We watched some gothic movies like Das Nightmare before Xmas. Maybe Willow will die too, I said. To why? Bloody Mary shook her head energetically, lethargically. Oh yeah. Oh, have a confession. After she got expelled, I murdered her. And then Lupin did it with her because he's a necrophiliac. Kawaii, I commented happily. We talked to each other in silence for the rest of the movie. Despite this, it seems that Raven and Tara made up in quite a timely fashion, because in the next chapter of My Immortal, Willow is not expelled or dead, she's just back. Raven continues to be credited as an editor on most of the My Immortal chapters. They wrote Ghost of You, that the Hermione version after this as well. But unlike Willow, Raven's I'm Not Okay remained in the grave. It ran for a total of five very short chapters, uh, just over 2,000 words, whereas My Immortal would go on to run for 44 chapters and nearly 23,000 words, leaving the original and superior, at least from a literary perspective, version to be lost to obscurity, forgotten about. Perhaps Raven and Tara decided one was enough. If, if they were going to share a brain, they may as well collaborate on one final work rather than have these two uncanny parallel versions. And My Immortal was by far the more popular version. Like, we love My Immortal now as this icon of internet history and this, like, fun time capsule of 2000s emo. Like, nostalgia kind of feels inextricable from its popularity now, but it was extremely popular when it was current as well. There was huge communities of people following My Immortal as it was updating in 2006 and 2007. It gained a reputation as the worst fan fiction ever written, but people were just glued to it like a train wreck. Once things picked up, new chapters were getting thousands, even up to 10,000 reviews. And that's the people who took the time to write a review. Imagine how many just views this thing was getting. Part of what kept people so intrigued by My Immortal was the question of, was there sincere intentions behind it or was it 
intentionally crafted to be that way as a parody, as trolling. Do people still say trolling? Boys. I don't know if you can hear my cats grooming each other too. Boy boys. Hellos. Hi boys. Hi boys. Anyway, if it sounds like there is a man eating chili off camera, that's my cat. My Immortal just, it hit so many fanfiction tropes and it did so, so egregiously that people thought it, like, like it worked so well if it was a parody that people thought it must be. Were Raven and Tara also characters created by some ultimate puppet master who had orchestrated all of this? One argument that's out there against it being a troll is that this would have been a lot of work for a troll. Writing, writing 23,000 words is not nothing. Um, however, I disagree. I think a troll would have been incentivized to milk this even more. Because My Immortal was, it was so, so popular. And the way that it ended, no spoilers yet, um, is, is quite anticlimactic and I think points to it not being a troll. I think that the amount of hatred and harassment directed towards Raven and Terra played a role in My Immortal ending, which shockingly, uh, points towards them being real people with real emotions. Whereas a troll, I think, would would want that violently hateful response. They, they would find that funny. They would just be encouraged by it. And the way it began as well with Raven's fanfiction coming a month before and then the two of them running parallel to each other for a few months, it just feels messy. And then there are these other characters in the, the Raven and Tara universe. There's Tara has a boyfriend named Justin. They have a friend called Philippa Clark or Philly who they both reference a lot. And it's like, what, what, no, nothing really became of these other characters if they were in fact characters. This was either a extremely galaxy brain orchestration that never fully came to fruition because we still have all of these kind of dead ends and strings which lead nowhere in messy details, or I dare say these kids were real. And that's really, I guess, what this video is about. Who, who wrote My Immortal? Were Raven and Terra real? And if so, who were they? We don't know but I, I want to give you a good overview of, of the things that we do know. Before getting into all of the, the crazy claims and investigations made by other internet users, let us refer to the primary source, the fan fictions, the author's notes. What can we tell about Raven and Tara from those? Well, we already read Raven's profile. We know that her real name is Jenny and she is 14 years old, so presumably so is Tara. We know that Raven and Tara are not just online friends, but friends in real life because we have Raven borrowing a sweater from Tara and them having a fight about that, or maybe that making one of their fights worse. I don't really know what was up with the sweater, but the borrowing of the sweater indicates that they, they are in proximity to each other in real life. There are some other facts about them or about whoever was running their accounts uh, that we can verify. Um, however, I need to take you down a little bit of another tangent to tell you about how we know these things. Uh, it has to do with a site called Encyclopedia Dramatica. It still exists, although the site that, that still exists is like a it's like a cleaned up version of what it was in the 2000s. The purpose of Encyclopedia Dramatica was to catalog online drama, online figures and phenomena worthy of harassment, essentially. It was it was for pointing, going, ew, look at the cringe. I think I ended up on Encyclopedia Dramatica once when I was into Onision drama. That's, that's the kind of thing it's for. Obviously we all hate Onision and that's a fun one, but um, I'm sure there was a lot of uh, less fun situations with people being harassed by that site. So naturally, uh, the users of Encyclopedia Dramatica, um, around when My Immortal was getting very popular, became interested in doxing the creator. The sharing of their initial research probably took place in private chat rooms, so we have no record of it. Uh, however, we do know of a few profiles that they found throughout the internet belonging to Tara. The consensus at the time seemed to be that she was either a real person or a persona that a particular troll was, was very dedicated to uh, across different profiles, across um, years. Now, I'm warning you, uh, the internet was a different time back then. We do not have her Instagram, Facebook, etc. Uh, no, instead, the, the first and one of the most notable accounts of Terra's that we know of is her account on the IMDb forums. The account was called Gothic Girl. It was created in 2005, so pre My Immortal. Her profile read, Hi, I'm Tara, I'm goth and prode. I have dyed black hair and blue eyes. I wear eyeliner a lot of the time. I have a BF. His name is Justin. He rocks. I live in Dubia. Likes eyeliner, gothic makeup, being gothic. Good Charlotte, death, sletting my wrists, drac colors, hot topic, dislicks, being alive, bow, 
pop music, bright colors, pink Barbie, Hillary doof. The music I lick. <laughs> Lincoln Prack. <laughs> Good Shrelet, Evanescence, Simple Plan, Akon Avril Lavigne, Blink 183. <laughs> Lord, I'm gonna cry off my emo eyeliner. Panic at the Disco, Fall Out Boy. <laughs> MCR, Hillary Doof is a poser. The reason she's so upset about Hillary Duff all the time, by the way, is because she was dating the lead singer of Good Charlotte at the time, so the emos were hearing about her against their wills a lot. Fave movies, When Stranger Calls, The Grudge, The Grudge 2, Corpse Bird, The Nightmare Before Christmas, The Ring 2, The Ring, Shrek Attack. <laughs> So Tara was quite active on the IMDb forums, talking about bands, music videos, horror movies, and she already had quite a reputation as a troll because of the everything of this. So if she was in fact a troll, uh, the, the Tara persona predates My Immortal by, by at least around a year. The next account we know of was a Quizilla account using the same username as her fanfiction.net account, XXX. Bloody wrist 666 XXX. We know that it was hers. It was linked in her fanfiction.net profile for a while. Um, and we have screenshots and verifications of this from various different sources who saw it. Her profile also contained a link to petitiononline.com, everyone's favorite social media website. She had created a petition called Tara Gillespie is totally gothic in November, 2005. Again, a few months before My Immortal. This is how we know the, the full name Tara Gillespie, which you, you often see associated with My Immortal. That was one of my biggest questions when I started researching this. I was like, how the hell do we know the full name Tara Gillespie? Where are you people getting this? Um, is this gonna lead me to like some weird dead end and like somebody made it up on Reddit? No, this, this Tara Gillespie is totally gothic petition from 2005, uh, which was linked in her fanfiction.net bio at the time is how we know her full name. It gets weirder than that though, over on petitiononline.com. So she had created the Tara Gillespie is totally gothic petition in response to some discourse, not, not really discourse, just like stupid internet slap fighting of the 2000s. Um, she'd got into a little bit of a fight um, in the comments section of a different petition called Stop Ashley Simpson, for whatever reason, whatever, she's having petty little 2000s internet snipes, everyone calling each other slurs, and on numerous occasions she invites the other users to email her at gothicchick at hotmail.com uh, so that she can show them all of her gothic pictures and tattoo ideas and, and things like that. Oh my god, we we have her email address. Um, this email address doesn't doesn't work anymore. Don't try emailing it. That's that's not why it's important. Again, it's weirder than that. Social media sites such as LiveJournal and MySpace at the time were notoriously subject to huge data leaks. And there are public databases out there where, where you can search this leaked data to see if your stuff is out there and, and you need to change some passwords real fast. So we are able to confirm some profiles that were made using Tara's email. One of them is a live journal, which looks very Tara, but might easily have been dismissed among the hordes of people impersonating her online later. But in fact, we can verify that this live journal account was created by the same person who created Tara Gillespie's totally gothic petition in 2005 and wrote my immortal. The account has now been completely deleted, of course. There is a way back machine capture from 2010 that is unfortunately still a bit late. By that point, nearly everything had been deleted except for a handful of posts from 2006. Thursday, June 1st. 2006. Okay, well, today I went to Philly's party. Uh, that's uh, the friend Philippa, who both she and Raven mentioned a few times in their author's notes. And Justin, that's Tara's boyfriend, and Raven and Shamik and all these other people were there. We watched The Grudge, then we listened to MCR and danced. Well, not rally, we moshed. Well, Raven is going to have a party herself on the end of school year, so we are going to Hot Topic for a uh, new dress, lol. I think I'm gonna update my fanfic tomorrow, or maybe the day after that. P.S. If you're one of the fucking preps flaming the story, then go to hell. Tuesday, June 6th, 2006. Well, today is 666. I am going to see the omen. Is anyone else lols? Satan rocks 666. Friday, June 16th, 2006. 
for the last time for nay one reading story, stop flaming. If you don't, then you will be a prep or a poser. Okay, so fuck you. Well, new way the exams are over, lols, so I am going to go see Shork Attack 7 Deep Water with Philly and Kiwi today, lols. Then we will all cut, lols. So fuck all you preps. Current mood, depressed. Current music, hold on by Good Charlotte. We also know that Tara had a MySpace account. We, we don't know anything about what was on it or what it looked like. Maybe some My Immortal fans in 2006 managed to see it, but they haven't left us any screenshots or web archives. So, this the mystery MySpace account, it exists. That's that's the last account we know of that is, is considered to be confirmed run by Tara. I want to quickly address the question of where Tara lived and Raven, because we know we know they knew each other in real life, um, and presumably some of these other friends that, that are mentioned in live journal posts. Her IMDb profile says Dubia which is not a place. The author's note of My Immortal Chapter 44 says that Tara will be leaving Dubya soon for a trip. That's also not a place. Uh, but most of the words that she types are spelled wrong, and, and most people have assumed that these are typos for Dubai. Now, of course, there is no hot topic in Dubai. It's, it's quite religious and conservative. It seems unlikely that she was thriving as a goth girl and Satanist publicly, to which I have to say, okay, all the more reason to, to write my immortal and to, to have this persona online. I've always assumed that if there was a teenager with sincere intentions behind my immortal, she created this cool goth persona for herself just as much as she created Ebony. So when I kind of lean towards implying that the Terra was real rather than a troll, I don't necessarily mean that she existed in exactly the way that she tells us we existed. I think for me the debate is whether the intention was sincere, whether it was created by someone who actually thought this stuff was like awesome and cool and really enjoyed it unironically, cringe culture is dead, you know, um, whether that was the attitude behind it or whether it was like trolling parody, that's sort of the debate in my brain. So the fact that if Tara was real, she, she might have lived in Dubai, that, that doesn't necessarily feel like an incongruous fact to me. Plus she could have easily been an American or Canadian or Canadian teenager uh, living in Dubai with her parents because of their work. Actually, you know what? You know what? Okay, that's my theory. Okay, that's a theory I'm putting forward because I feel like the amount that Tara talks about uh, traveling in the My Immortal Authors notes says stuff like, oh, she'll update when she gets back or, or talks about Raven traveling. I think that's my theory. I think that they were American or Canadian teenagers uh, whose parents traveled a lot for work and who were based in Dubai at that time. Oh my God, my binguses. Look at them. Look at my binguses. They're so beautiful. Now that we have a few facts to stew around in our brain about who Raven and Tara might have been, um, hopefully, uh, if my research is good, uh, these are the same kinds of thoughts that people were having around the time that uh, My Immortal was still updating, uh, based on what these Encyclopedia Dramatica users had dug up. Anyway, let's get back to what was going on with My Immortal. It, it was going quite well, actually, up until chapter 39. Disclaimer, I do not own the Harry Potter series, and I am not the real XXX Bloody Wrists 666 XXX. Author's note, I am an extremely immature, pathetic idiot girl, I know. Out of boredom, I cracked this girl's passy for fun, and it took less than eight minutes to do it, and will probably get in a shitload of trouble, which I probably deserve because I'm being a troll right now. Meh, and I present to you my crappy part of the story. And take note, I haven't even finished reading the fic yet, but instead skipped over to skim chapter 38, flame, laugh, do whatever you want, preps. So there's this self-proclaimed hacker on Tara's account who writes her own version, her, her own chapter 39, essentially making fun of Ebony and the whole premise of My Immortal, eventually killing off Ebony, sending her to hell where she's forced to wear Hollister clothing. The hacker then posts Tara's original chapter 39, now known as chapter 40, which they found in the fanfiction.net document editor. Before the hacking, My Immortal updated almost every week, but this threw a huge wrench in it. It, it didn't update for a long time after that, and when it did, Tara sort of unceremoniously dumped chapters 41 to 44 all in one go. Chapter 44 ended on a cliffhanger, and then that was it. She never updated it again. And to me, this feels like evidence that Tara might not have been a troll. It feels like maybe this hacking drove home how crazy people were and how much they hated her work, and it kind of stopped being fun for her. She continued writing chapters 41 to 44 for herself, but was apprehensive to post it, and so didn't update the fan fiction. And eventually she just, she just dumped them all and stopped. Just the sequence of events here, the fact that the hacking was like the beginning of the end for My Immortal, that Tara seemed extremely discouraged after it, it just, 
doesn't add up if we assume that she was a troll who, who fabricated all of this for added drama and intrigue in the story. And in fact, we have even more evidence that the chapter 39 hacking was real, namely the hackers confessed and we know who they are. This is one of those things that feels like it was widely known in the My Immortal fan base of 2006, 2007, but is kind of hard for us internet archaeologists to dig up these days. So I found a post by Tumblr user My Immortal is Immortal, who found some discussions of the hacking on the Tara Gillespie fan club on LiveJournal, which was a community following My Immortal that was very active around the time that it was updating. And the fan club casually references the hackers as being fanfiction.net users, Ernest in Berlin, and Korskit Corruption. Posts were found on another forum which backed up those claims. I'm going to keep saying Korskit Consumption for the next few minutes, but I need you to know that's wrong. It's Corruption. Her username is Korskit Corruption. I could not speak at all the day that I filmed this video, apparently. Korska Consumption tells us that Tara's password was simply Tara, and that she had control of the account for two days. She is the writer of chapter 39, presumably. I mean, to me, the, the writing styles and the voice of the chapter 39 author's note and Korska Consumption's other posts are they feel consistent, it feels like the same person to me. So a fanfiction.net user called Korskit Consumption was the first to hack into Tara's account using the password Tara, wrote chapter 39, um, was in control of the account for two days until it was also hacked into by a user called Ernest in Berlin, who then changed the password, locking out Korskit Consumption, but also made their new password public, which meant that Tara was able to get back into the account and change the password and, and take control of it again. There is a comment on fanfiction.net from another user verifying that they were able to log into Tara's account when the password was leaked, so presumably they didn't do anything on it, but yeah, everyone was just having a wild house party in her account. <laughs> the hacking and chapter 39 were just such a hilarious turn of events for my immortal that most people assumed that they, they must have been on purpose. They were, they were too funny to be real. Pretty much everyone who has come forward on, over the years claiming to be the real Terra, claiming to have written My Immortal, uh, has confessed that the hacking was all part of the story and they faked it. But there is a good amount of evidence, in my opinion, that it was not fake. And for me, part of that evidence is that um, it seems to have been the the beginning of the end for My Immortal, the, th the thing that triggered Terra losing interest in it. So after the release of chapters 41 to 44, my Immortal lays dormant for months, and then in 2008, it is deleted from fanfiction.net. Now, this was not um, unheard of. It, it rang some familiar alarm bells for a lot of fanfiction.net users. Fanfiction.net was known for periodically purging content from the site, content being sexually explicit, extremely badly written, infringing on copyright in ways like using song lyrics, uh, all things that tended to put a piece at risk, to which I really just... I have to say, do, do you people know what fanfiction is? Like, aren't you supposed to be running the fanfiction website? Do you know what people use the site for? And most fanfiction.net users at the time, uh, I think, felt similarly. They felt that this was just extremely illogical and unfair to users. It's just such a stupid situation that I actually do think it's possible that whoever was cleaning up the site some managed to overlook how popular and beloved My Immortal was across the internet. Like, you would think that would give it some kind of immunity, but this whole situation is so stupid that it might not have. 2008, My Immortal is gone. Was it deleted by fanfiction.net? By a hacker? By Tara? Nobody knows. Over the next few years, countless people would claim to be her, her friends, her family members, putting forward answers to all of these mysteries that had come up. The shit show was officially on. And in my next video, I will go be going into three particularly high profile and particularly bonkers uh, contenders for the identity of Tara and Raven that came up over the years. Anyway, thanks for watching, you fucking preps. Remember to like and subscribe for me to read you the entirety of My Immortal in a video, and I will see you in another My Immortal related video very soon.